Hello folks and welcome once again to another episode of uh, Travel Insights. Uh, today we have with us uh, someone who really doesn't need an uh, introduction. Ankush Nijavan, Managing Director, Nijavan Group and uh, Co-Founder of the TBO Group. Ankush is a graduate from Bryant College, USA with a major in Marketing and Psychology. With his strategic vision and passion, Ankush is directing uh, Nijavan Group and Travel Boutique Online to be one of the leaders in the travel industry. Ankush set up and launched uh, Travel Boutique Online in the year 2007. And since then, uh, more than 60,000 travel agents across India, Middle East, Africa, Latin America, Europe, and Asia Pacific have been empowered by TBO to survive in this competitive industry. And today, the TBO group is the largest and leading B2B travel portals in India and emerging as a strong player globally, having a presence in 100 plus countries with 28 global offices. Also with his efforts today, Nijavan Group currently exclusively represents hospitality brands, excursions and tourism boards. Uh, to name a few, Armani Hotels, uh, Address Hotels, Banyan Tree, Adaran Group, Kempinski Hotels, Serena Hotels, uh, in terms of excursions, Ocean Park and Dubai Parks, and in terms of uh, tourism uh, organizations, the DTCM, Dubai Tourism and Commerce Marketing, as well as Bosnia Tourism. CNBC had uh, chosen Ankush to be one of the Young Turks, and apart from that, he has won various other awards as well. One of the lesser known facts about Ankush probably is that uh, he's an angel investor in startups and a pretty successful one at that. With a few of the well-known names in which he has invested being uh, In Shorts, Dine Out, uh, Peabody, uh, Wittlinga Beer, My Green Box, Shadi Saka and a couple of others. Ankush is also a part of various associations as an executive committee member such as uh, CII, SCOL, OTOAI, FIKI and is also a part of the YPO Delhi chapter. He is also the Executive Director of Global Panorama Showcase or GPS. Ankush today is by far one of the most successful youngsters in the travel industry. Uh, a very keen sportsman, loves his game of cricket and a music and movie buff. Ankush loves living life to the fullest. Welcome Ankush, thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you, Mish. Thanks for the lovely introduction. Really appreciate your overwhelming words uh, and I'm, I'm humbled to hear that. Thank you very much. Not at all. I'm sure there's a lot more to say, but I'm, I'm not saying it right now. Maybe the next time. So now, getting straight into the interview. Uh, you are, of course, uh, part of a very well-known family which has been in the travel trade now for three generations in. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your journey so far and how you ventured into the travel trade yourself? So, um, Amish, um, time flies. It's my 20th year being in the business myself. I uh, came in from college uh, as a spoiled party brat. Not that I was bad in academics. I didn't excel very well in my college life. Came back home, you know, just to gain some experience uh, at some great multinational, go back for my MBA, um, you know, and then come back to work again. One, my aspiration was always to be back home after US. The, the day I graduated on May 19th, 2000, 1999, after two days, I was back in India, had a great three months sabbatical, started looking for jobs, interviewed with various companies such as ESP and Pepsi. A couple of challenges which I ever had was that being from a business family, why do you need to work? Was the question I was being asked by everybody. The reality was that, yes, I knew my intent would be to go back to business, but I think working outside, apart from, you know, in your own company is different than working elsewhere. So I interviewed, I was selected by ESPN, two days at work and the third day I never showed up. Because suddenly what came into me was that getting up at 8 a.m., working for somebody else, making money for somebody else's company doesn't make sense when you have a business which I could always fall back. Came back to meet my father and I said, you know, this is what I want to do. Knowing that, uh, he never let me do that. He says, I don't think you will be serious at work. You will treat it as my company. So, you know, I don't think you should definitely, you know, work outside, learn and then come back. I said, trust me, I will be as serious as you, as you want me to be and give me some a chance, which he did. So I was the first one to show up at office and the last one to leave. Uh, I think a couple of years down the line, he gained that confidence. Obviously running a small brick and mortar B2B company, apart from the GSA for British Airways, what we used to do in those days, uh, was something which I never was asked to join because he realized that the GSA concept is going to die with time as the internet was penetrating. Uh, you know, 9-11 had happened at that time and you know, things were getting a little challenging. 
So he said, look at something else, which was Travel Boutique, which is the B2B brick and mortar. Two years I rocked it out there, gained some share. Uh, we were at almost $25 million, only operating in Delhi and not part of India. Uh, then finally, when I went wanted to go back to MBA, I still remember that night when I had to ask him to remit my money to the college in the UK, which I was being admitted to. He was the one who said, you don't need an MBA. I said, why? He says, because what you have done in the last two years is something I can't replicate. I don't have the time for doing that. And remember one thing, competition moves very quickly. If you're out of, out of business, people forget you. And you have made that you know name of your own now, which is something which I would like you to carry. And being a business on your own, I think teaches you an MBA. And I'm very proud to say today that after doing a business for 20 years, I can probably teach a lot of Harvard graduates who are studying today at the Harvard. Because I think what experience you learn doing a business is very different than what you would do at college. So I think I dropped my MBA because my father didn't want me to do an MBA. So I always uh, tell myself that I'm always an MBA internally in my mind. But I think that was the reason I did not. Till 2005, I ran that company for the past first five years. I uh, was doing well, recognized by the North India market in specific. And that's the time when I realized that if I don't you know, adopt technology, uh, it's time before I will start folding up my shop, which my other co-colleagues or co-competitors were doing in those days. Uh, a very wise man in the industry told me, why are you like to do a B2C? The plan was to you know, start competing like an OTA, but he told me that you will always be known as a B2B distributor. You know, your forefathers have done the same job. Why would you like to do something which is different? It is better that you actually become a master of this, get technology and start you know, scaling up and so on and so forth. So 2006, uh, we started building the software. I met my co-founder uh, who was not from the travel background. He's an IIT and he graduated um, uh, from IIT Delhi. Did his engineering from Microsoft. Both of us got together. His name is Bharat Patnagar. Um, spent almost six months making the business plan. Had some crazy audacious goals. Um, you know, doing a billion dollars in 2011-12 was something which I used to look at the business plan and say, Ki kaise hoga? You know, it was something which kind of made me feel crazy, you know, but I think the mission was there, I think the hunger was there and both of us launched EO, which today, which you just mentioned yourself, um, from a $25 million company in 2006, moving to almost 2 billion pre-COVID, this is 31st March closing, operating in almost 100 countries today, I think I'm very proud on what we have done. Um, you know, today I think the way the company runs is probably a pride of the nation and I say this to you, why? It's because you hear American Express operating, you hear a Carlson wagon operating in India or a Thomas Cook. But how many companies do you actually know who are born in India and today operating in 100 countries? So one of my favorite lines when I tell my colleagues like yourself and seniors is that we are a truly multinational company born from them. I think so this is something which I think the nation should be pride at a company which got was, was something which was all started from here today is operating as one of the largest B2B player in India and obviously a growing player in the overseas uh, market as well. So I think it's been a great journey. Uh, today we employ more than 1200 people, uh, very corporatized. I have a great uh, investors in uh, Standard Chartered Private Equity which is now known as a firm of capital. Uh, very privately held, um, very profitable. You know, which today the internet world doesn't see many companies who are churning cash, churning profits. I think TV is definitely one of the leaders there. Um, do a large gamut of products, right? And I think our 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 mission is only serving the travel agents. We don't have a B2C model at all because there's something which we always kept away. Uh, the fraternity is our market, travel trade is our market, right? And I think that's something we breathe every day. And we'll ensure that we continue to serve the industry better with all the good things we're trying to bring. Uh, be as transparent, ethical um, as we are and what I have been taught the day I joined in the business. Uh, what I was told by my forefathers was very simple. Money is something you will also make, but reputation is something very few may have it. Please do not give your reputation up. All the good work they had done in 30 years, which is almost going to be 45, 46 years in 2020. Uh, but I think it's been a great journey and I really thank all my stakeholders who believed in me when I came as a young boy. So today, uh, when I see, when I go back and at the hindsight, when I think about these cells, you know, I always tell everybody, I will write a book one day, the life behind the scene of TVO. Because what happens is that many people today obviously call us the pioneer or the visionary, which makes me smile because many of them criticized us in 2007 or 18 in those early days. But today, I think, um, I think what we have done is probably evolved the market. I think we have held the market together. Because today, I think we are a very big element of many small and medium travel agents today who are surviving in this competitive world, especially since the online world is now getting more and more involved. I think we are like the 
I would say the the vehicle which today we are we, we are the engine of that vehicle where all the trains behind all the buggies behind us are the travel partners and try to fight and we are making sure that we keep doing the right job so that everybody survives and I'm sure more and more if the time will come I think more and more agents will get to us you know and get attached to us and I used to always you know you must have heard Amish in your whole life in your past you know to me in, in business now is is you know traveling should die. The reality is, I add at least hundred of agents every month across the world. So it's not only in India. Online is here to stay. Offline is here to stay. Both of them will coexist. It's just that your way of doing business will have to change. But I always say, if you control your customer, I think rest you can always you know use companies like us or somebody else's to survive. So I think I'm very optimistic. And post COVID, I think the offline industry will be far stronger than what it used to be because the belief. Of a passenger when he was stuck in the last four months, you know, be it coming back home, his son or his daughter who was stuck in university, your refunds, etc. I think the travel fraternity really stood up tall, managed there, you know, to help their customers out, and obviously we in turn at TVO made sure that everything happened seamlessly so that you guys don't lose your confidence. You mean the industry doesn't lose the confidence with their passenger, and I'm sure this thing post COVID will get the offline back market much stronger than where it used. Now, just one question when it comes to TVO. Do you are you uh, more focused on empowering the agent with technology, or is it more the bargaining power in terms of getting better deals for the agents, whether it is airlines, whether it is hotels, whether it is packages? What do you think is the real USP, and what the agent should be looking for? Great question. Uh, I mean, for me, technology is the backbone of the company because that will help you to scale and actually penetrate the market much more. Getting the right deal and inventories was always there, but the question was how do I push it to the tier two, three, four, five, six, seven cities in India, which the technology enabled us to do that. Plus today, with this fast-changing life, okay, pre-COVID, I think everybody today doesn't have the time to pick up the phone, email. I think whatever we can do is on your phone, and I think that is where I always told my team and the vision that after WhatsApp, we should be the second most app being used by the travel agent on his mobile or his desktop, because. That is where we will bring you everything as a gamut of products, be it airline inventory, hotel inventory, insurance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think technology is something where we are empowering the travel agent. All the technology, what you see, what we have built over years, was actually taught by great people at the travel companies. I must tell you, I have met some great entrepreneurs and people in the travel industry who could not build technology for various reasons, but they helped us to build this what we have today, so that they can be empowered better to service their. Uh, and corporate or customer data. So I think technology is going to be our nervous system, as I say. The heart, obviously, is is going to be the people who we have, and the army, and the team, and the company which we have built. And I think that's the whole idea behind it. But technology is will play the foremost in our travel. Therefore, if you see my motto, it says technology inspiring travel. So ten years back, it was take travel before technology, but now it is technology before travel. <laughs> Right, and I think if today to go and hit the whole of India, it doesn't make sense. Have the handful of people in your pin code be a master, be the Kirana shop, as I say, of that pin code. You know, when everybody wants to think travel, they will go to your particular website. Mm -hmm. And how important do you think artificial intelligence is in the entire role play of technology with travel? It's a new term. It's a new word. Everybody talks about it. I think the industry is building that AI, which will eventually evolve and fall into place. I think it's going to be an important tool, not at the moment right now, because I think post COVID there are many other challenges. One has to first fight it out before you actually start again developing other things. But parallelly at TBO we are building AI because that will help the travel agencies to make more money. So I'll give you a small example. If I do Delhi Bombay 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. or Delhi Bangalore, I do let's say 1,000 seats. What can I do? With my AI, and go back to an airline and negotiate a better deal, which in turn I can pass it on to the travel agent, so he makes more money. I negotiate better with my supplier. The very basic example of an AI. If I knew that this particular travel agent searches between 2 a.m. or 2 p.m. and 4 p.m., I will make sure that with my AI, I'm when he logs in at 2, I throw him things or or deals or hotel deals or airline things which he I know will eventually buy because his customer base has a we have a pattern of what his customers want, which he's searching on our. Website, so that will help me converting faster. It will help the agent to make more money. So I'm just giving very basic AI things tools which TBO is trying to do uh, for our external face, which is the travel agent. We have mentioned COVID-19, which of course is one of the most difficult phases all of us are going through. I don't think any of us had ever thought we'd get hit by something of this kind. How has this affected uh, 
your various verticals you know in considering your airlines hotels vacations everything how has it affected you and how are you coping with this so amish we had a bull run in 2021 we had a great five years everything is now ground zero for everybody as i say it's time where we reboot ourselves everybody is come back to their starting points again however uh, as a company when i say particularly for us for us it is basically holding our people with us right now because obviously job losses salary cuts is something which we, all of us including every industry has been going through at tvo we had to take certain hard calls but we haven't asked anybody to leave in our company there are about 50% of our workforce which have gone leave without pay uh, the rest are still with us at some salary cuts you know and obviously um, this is something which i think will time is coming back we also called almost 12 employees of our back starting first july because the business is coming back the idea was us to reserve our cash because fortunately tvo has a lot of cash and reserve surplus with us uh, we don't have any debt in our balance sheet there is no loan or anything on us so that was something which was making me breathe and sleep comfortably it's just that we have thought about new things right um, which you will see tvo launching it post probably couple of months things which we would have never done uh, if we would have been in that bull run i think tvo that this during last three months it gave us time to actually go back to those certain levels uh you know understanding a company better you know getting more close to your people emotionally right and ensuring that we develop the new things which probably will help us to fight another pandemic god forbid if it happens after 10 years because i think putting eggs in the same basket which all of us do as humans is something which i think we realized we should not uh, de risk us uh, we should not risk ourselves and does not mean that doesn't mean that i'm moving out of the travel business or go, i'm going to start <laughs> sanitizers i'm not saying that i will be further getting our more verticals uh, which we have not done for example medical tourism right it's a great opportunity which tvo can involve cargo for example which tvo never did right so these are all segments which you will hear us uh, launching as we proceed uh, end of this year so for us yes we suffered there has been cash loss there's been Well, uh, I've never seen loss in my life, which I've seen in the first three months of this year. Significant yeah. loss, but I think TVO has that power to stand, um, you know, and come back. And I'm sure 2021 will be a better year than what we did in 19. Yeah. Now, coming to the revival post-COVID, I guess, like you mentioned, we are all looking at sometime in September, October. So, can you just briefly tell me what are your views on each of the components of the travel business in terms of aviation, tourism, and hospitality? how will it pan out for each one of them the recovery phase so i break it into four parts amish and i break the remaining six months in two parts and then 2021 into another two parts and this is what i've been doing it in my own business plan so i think the first two months which is starting now is going to be short haul when i say short haul this has started now so people might have some courage you know to travel let's say between bangalore to a mysore or a bangalore to a kodikanal for a holiday Uh, or a delhi to a jaipur uh, home uh, drive ways will happen uh, people would like to drive 300 kilometers outside their, uh, from their hometowns uh, hotels will gradually open right i i think the deals which you will get us is going to be ever higher because even the hotels are on fixed occupancy i mean whatever you paid 5000 in 2019 you will probably pay 2000 uh, in uh, in this part of the next 3 months monsoons we are ready to travel to goa people want to enjoy the rains there is so much hunger 68% of people in india do without vaccine are still ready to travel so you can imagine how much there is willingness for people to travel in the next three months i think first september uh, the short haul will pick up right uh, international as well uh, i see dubai i see uh, sri lanka i see maldives i see singapore you know which is close from home uh, people are more comfortable you know and the visa regime in my opinion it will be much easier and much more uh, flexible than probably in europe and the us uh the flight inventory will be uh, back to normal for this particular short haul and i think the pricing is going to be very very realistic because they will be just starting i think the airlines will have a lot of hunger to get those uh, passengers on the flight i think after diwali now for 2021 i see weddings coming back to one because india might have a restriction on the number of people in during weddings there will be more restrictions probably in india second is mice uh the corporates will be back hopefully they will have a decent q3 q4 in their pnls so i see this mice happening uh, in march as well both short haul as well as domestic but i think first april is going to be a crazy crazy time because covid will be behind us vaccine will be out people will be like you know that revenge travel as i say when you don't get yes. food for 10 days you want to you will overeat right it's the same thing if you haven't seen travel i think the young today the young india which is up uh, 35 and less the 65% of our urban india i mean they will move like how I mean, you know i think they will 
Yeah, exactly. So I do yeah, absolutely. But I think a lot of unexplored India, which all of us never focused on, and I, including myself, will start looking into many other gateways or certain cities, uh, which will be at hill station or some beaches or some uh, religious places, which people will start traveling, which we never did. And what the PM said in his last year speech at the Independence Day that every Indian should travel to five destinations in India by 2024, I think his wish list will happen much faster. And then you also mentioned that this during this COVID time, you spent a lot of time looking at your business plan, etc. So, what are the kind of innovations which you are looking towards uh, in terms of TBO as a as a platform by itself? So we. Our internal version has been upgraded because I think operating leverages is something which will definitely you know make a lot of sense uh, because all of us realized that there were things which we were just spending for no reason which today if all of us went back and looked at our PNLs there were certain things you you have to, you can actually you know let them go and still do better than what we were doing I think tech will definitely help that so currently our own version has been upgraded second Island Hopper which we acquired last year now is on the TBO's technology. Uh, you know, it's a new version which I think will be far more robust and the inventory will be far more um, uh, more friendly, I would say, when somebody is booking because I think Maldi is going to be one of the fastest going destinations again in 2021 as well, in the remainder of 2020. Hajj and Umrah, uh, the Hajj GDS is a separate GDS now and the Hajj ministry has only approved very few companies in the world. So TV will be the third company going live where we'll be helping the Umrah passengers to actually book the itineraries online, including the visa and the hotels which I think is going to be a very important uh, new development for TVO because this was some market which we never focused on. So this is something which is ready, ready to shoot. Unfortunately, Saudi closed down, which I'm sure late like this year or early next year, life will be back to normal. Um, third was Paxis, which is our self-booking tool for corporates. Um, I just want to again reiterate, it's not that we will be going to the corporate directly. We will enable the TVM TMCs to actually use our technology and and they are happy to use our inventory and deals or they can put their own deals whatever they might be i think this corporate segment is something we would like to penetrate with the self booking tool because i think this is where a lot of travel agents you know take a beating uh, versus yeah. a largest larger tmc studio yeah. with technology etc and products like cruises we are uh, write, uh, writing our codes we have trail europe which we never sold so i think there was time when we all went back again enhance our current technology and adding all these new products cargo for example we are looking at very seriously uh, but cargo, I think, will be more offline because unfortunately, technology cannot pick. Uh, yeah, yeah. It is more of a, it's more of a people kind of run business. There are a lot of youngsters in the travel trade today who look up to you and who want to be the next Ankush Nijawan. And of course, I, I'm sure they won't manage to be the next Ankush Nijawan. But nevertheless, what is the kind of advice you would give them coming ahead for the years ahead? What should they do to? We keep abreast with the travel trade and make a success out of it. Thanks, Amish. But I'm sure somebody will uh, probably become better than what I am. Har admi ka time aata, as they say. Um, so, one is, I think, one has to believe in yourself. There was not a single day, even till today, when I don't get up in the morning excited, passionate of what I've been doing. Uh, because that's something which is the key, key point, I think, which is the biggest driver for anybody's success, be it in any business. No shortcuts. You know, when I see young kid, younger youngsters who are 20 years, 50 years younger to me, everybody wants to become a billionaire or a millionaire in one month. It doesn't happen like that. I mean, if, if, if you sit with me for a drink, I can tell you things where I have done. And I look back and say, wow, I did all this to be where I am today. You know, there are no short shortcuts. You know, you've got to work your ass off, as I say, to be where you are. And any command today who is successful, hats off to that ex, she or he. Because it looks very easy and nice when you see from outside, but what he or she have gone through over years to build where it is today, it's not something which is easy. Luck is something and it's very important. But I always say luck favors the brave, favors the hardworking person. Opportunity, I think opportunity comes in everybody's life. But some people are very good at picking it up and somebody will let it go. And somebody won't even realize that the opportunity came and went through. I think the timing and luck comes together when it comes to picking up the right opportunity. Honest and transparency. I think short term it might hurt you, but in the long term, people will, you know, will trust you for what you are doing, be it in our product or be your words, be it your finance, uh, which I think is very, very important. Competition, don't worry. I have never looked at my competition, Amish, and not because today where we are. As I say, apna kaam karo, because if you see what your neighbor is doing or your competition is doing, you'll waste half your time looking and doing that. Be a trendsetter yourself and let them follow you and do your business correctly. It's time when the competition realize that you're a serious player. Uh, definitely have a mentor. 
or a follow a person who you follow uh, because there are time when you're frustrated there are time when you're very excited and you might make wrong decisions during these two good and happy times as i say good and bad times as i say however that particular mentor will tell you like a check post you know i think you're going too fast you're doing getting very excited i don't think it is as bad as you think um, you know somebody who who sees you from a different level not from your uh, same team or employees because he's probably seeing the game better uh, sitting in the stands rather than playing yourself i think think tank is also very important you know you should have a core think tank in your system uh, be it your family be it your friends it might be your colleagues who you can actually brainstorm and they might then they will give you the right advice because everybody will have highs and lows be it whoever i think that's the time when people do make wrong decisions and that's the time when you should have the right people supporting you or guiding you or stopping you for doing something which might not be good in your decision and i think never break a law as i always said sarkar ke haath bahut lambe hote hain you know everybody should be a law abiding citizen because matter of time uh, with one of the departments will get to know you're doing something wrong and then you pay heavy penalties etc and lose your reputation going forward leaders are not born are always born are not born sorry sorry leaders are not born but i think leadership is time it's time you you will one one learns and a lot of youngsters talk about being an entrepreneur in leadership but the question is about demonstrate it you know today is covid i'm at work even i was told by my wife you know office jana zaruri hai i said kanka if i'm asking my people to be the office i have to be there very small example you know i think leadership has to be demonstrated for people to follow and i think fitness uh, is very important if you like golf you like to run you like badminton you like whatever i think it gets the guy or the or the woman feel better about himself and i think you perform better at work when you're physically fit because i think the energy levels are far higher rather than sitting on a sofa the whole day you know and getting lethargic so i think these are some uh, mantras which and discipline is something i think is very very important because timing and punctuality you know talks a lot in somebody's character so these are very basic things which today looks very simple when i say this But the reality is, how many of us actually adopt us on this on a day-to-day life? You know, so this is my uh, key message to the youngsters. And one guy again, remember, there's no shortcuts. Wait and that, that's good. Now, uh, coming to your role as an angel investor in startups, I mean, are you are you doing this in in like an, an organized way, or uh, is it more that you just like the idea and you say, okay, I'm in? and are you consciously staying away from travel related startups because i notice in the name list there's nothing really related to travel you put question amish so first is that uh, started investing as a uh, investor myself you know because i think after i raised uh, some uh, capital and I sold sold my some shares to naspers in 2012 i think the world spread around in the angel investing world that there's some guy who's been doing this so some of the great uh, young founders met me and i think this was my first stint when i invested the first money in a company called dynout i think the, the success of dynout lead, made me lead to meet some other great founders today who have built some great companies i made some good money there as well i won't deny that uh, but now with invested in almost 20 companies uh, we have decided to make it more organized uh, you will hear uh, uh, me launching this uh, company with another co-founder uh, which is going to be called kisho capital Uh, where we will invest in a more structured way rather than saying write a check for 10 lakhs 15 lakhs you know and then the, the, my co-founder will be the ceo i'll be more of a investor because i don't have the time to run that business because of my involvement at the representation slash tvo business the third question was that why haven't you traveled invested in a travel company myself because of conflict of interest plus it doesn't make sense i mean when you have an angel like tvo obviously it will be tvo who will invest or acquire uh, because it complements the current distribution channel of tvo um uh, two companies where we did invest uh, was fx card which is today a market place for foreign exchange and remittances very robust in technology um and the second one was sandcash which is today giving consumer loans to the end travel agent via the travel agent so this is something which i think after covid will be used more because into the, the day why would the travel agent get their money stuck because of working capital let the loan be paid uh to the end customer he will be paying the emi to the various company and the travel agent obviously makes his commission and uh, moves out it's just like when you when a dealer goes to a car loan and with the car is bought the dealer is out is put in the bank and the customer to the bank you know, two companies where tigo invested uh, penetrating the travel uh, that's great okay just now just a very personal question considering the number of hats and where the number of things are doing have you struck some kind of a deal with the universe that you've got 48 hours in a day as compared to 24 for all of us <laughs> Amish, um, thanks for. <laughs> I'm a good time manager. You know, I think uh, I prioritize my day on what I have, what is important. Yes, there is some God-gifted energy which I think uh, everybody is not gifted with. Is something which I think 
natural energy levels and i think it's my fitness regime which probably makes me much uh, more energetic than my peers uh third is delegation i delegate a lot of responsibilities to your colleagues i have a great team across india and the world uh you know i think that saves a lot of time plus also makes the group company go faster because if everything i had to do i would have not able to do what you just like just mentioned right now i think it's empowering and trusting of people uh they, it's not that they won't take wrong decisions or i won't make wrong decisions but all the 100 if five decisions are not correct it's okay the 95 were something which one has to respect and value okay so before we wind up uh, ankush any parting comments for our listeners from your side do not be demotivated i think the pandemic as i say everybody says i had a bad year i had a good year i think this year was bad for everybody uh you know i think one should not lose the faith in their businesses what they have it's a short term pain i realize it's been 3 months probably another 3 to 6 months it will stay like this uh i don't think one will do 30% of the business what they did in 2019 but i can tell you one thing you will probably do 130% or 30% more than what you did in 2019 the ones who survive this year will be a far uh, much richer and more profitable um what they had uh, this year so i think this year is where everybody has to lie low watch your watch your cash books watch your working capital you got to see your um, uh, your pnl very very closely take some harsh decisions you will have to take it uh, be very open to your colleagues you know because i think uh, transparency is something which they will also realize rather than just you know running away from the problem uh, and as i say fasten your seat belt and enjoy the ride for the next 6 months be safe and i think 2021 will be amazing thank you thank you so much ankush for closing this on such an optimistic notes and uh, there's a lot more that i would like love, love to ask you and maybe we'll do it again sometime a mm-hmm. couple of months down the line till then please do take care and we'll keep in touch with you thank you mesh and anybody who needs any help from me in in through uh, across the industry feel free to call me amish has all my details everybody has my details any time everyone knows so that's great and for our viewers uh, we hope you enjoyed this show and if you like share and subscribe and until next time take care stay safe